We have reached the halfway mark of the legislative session this year, Senator. There's some good bills out there. We've done one major bill that affected it was good for business, court proceeding bill, joiner, but we did get that passed. It's on its way to the House. So we're dealing with bills that are really important. Earlier in the year, I passed an egg bill, and it seemed kind of simple. It really wasn't because it has a huge effect on consumers and producers here in the state of Missouri. But Department of Revenue was willing to lower the penalties for anybody they caught unintentionally doing things. And I know when I had my supermarket, they came in and found a broken egg in the case. They could write me up and do this, that, and other. So we were really careful trying not to do that. People that didn't take care of things, and they had a pretty stiff penalty on them, put them out of business in that supermarket or the manufacturer, whoever it was on, could be out of business for quite a while. Department of Natural Resources, I've been very impressed with, wanted to lower the fund and make it more workable and didn't show up as a misdemeanor on their record. And so I was impressed with that and got that done a couple weeks ago and then just finished passing a supplemental salary for sheriff's deputies. And we passed it in the House and whenever on civil proceedings, if the sheriff serves the papers on them, there's a $10 fee in there that gets put in a pool and then subsidizes deputy sheriff salaries, I think, in several counties they were down to like sixteen or eighteen thousand dollars a year. That got held up in court because St. Louis thought they were being unfairly penalized. That fund steadily decreased. We did get a pass. The court upheld that it was legal to do. It did decrease and it's been decreasing steadily because of the amount of people that draw. And it's huge. Like in Webster County, I know it's almost four hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year that the county doesn't have to put in to get the deputy sheriff's salary up above thirty thousand dollars a year. Howell County is tremendous what it does down there. They don't get as much as Webster, but they still get $87,000 a year supplementing theirs. We've got one county in the state, the number one, they get over $450,000 a year doing that. Let's see, Webster County gets 426 and then Crawford County gets 418. I think all the deputies in every county except Douglas in my district is subsidized by this. In Ripley County, it's such a big issue. If we did not get this, they were going to have to go back to $18,000 a year for their deputies. Of course, then all their deputies have purchased houses. They can make house payments, car payments, and all that. So they were going to lose all their deputies. So we were able to get that reinstated, handle that. It's a tremendously big thing. It amounts to a lot of money. The bill basically says, okay, private servers, there's two ways of serving papers. They can do it by private server and private server Servers can charge whatever they want to, but they were not required to collect this fund. Sheriffs get paid $25 plus the $10, which goes into fund. They don't directly get it. goes into fund. They were not equal. The private servers did not have to collect it. So this bill makes the private servers collect it. And it all says if your county does not participate in it, you did not have to pay into it. It's not on criminal cases, only on civil. And oftentimes when a private server serves papers, he calls the sheriff and says, get over here fast. It's not a very pleasant thing to do. Get papers served on you. Some people get very physical, very emotional about it vocal about it. So oftentimes the private servers had call back me up or go with me. So it really wasn't fair to the sheriff's funds. It's unlimited what a private server can charge to do this. So this $10 will not affect them, shouldn't affect them in any way. The second half of session is generally busier than the first half and part of that will be obviously to get the budget done by the first part of May. It is. We finished that supplemental and agencies find themselves with overtime that they, especially in mental health or if we get in positions like prisons haven't had enough, could not keep employees because our pay was like 40 seventh or 49th in the nation. And so we had a hard time keeping employees. So if you can't keep employees, then you end up paying overtime to people. And that's also true in mental health, which are big drivers of it. Other incidental funds, and suddenly there's requirements that are done or not done or whatever. And we have a better idea. A year in advance, they might say, okay, we need 500 million for this department. Nine months later, a year later, they find, oops, we underestimated because of this, this, this happening, or bills you all passed. And we have to go back and subsidize that. So it was well over $500 million, but we passed that out of the Senate. A little bit different version in the House. It goes back to the House. We compromise on it. The governor will be included in that and actually sign it because he can veto it if he likes. So those are things that kind of have to happen. The 1st of April, we hope to have the House budget over here and then we'll be taking that up. And there goes several weeks of lots and lots of committee meetings, lots and lots of negotiation and quite a bit of conversation on the floor. But it'll go really fast and it will be loaded up. Major bill's been hung up committee a while. I had a major bill that got laid over. I had discussion on it for an hour to get it finished is probably going to take six or eight hours if I can get it finished. So things start slowing down. Bills are more complicated and things slow down. Discussion slows down. A lot of floor debate. People have different views, different values.